start sir uh, so uh, hello everyone uh, the topic for today will be refractory uh, glaucoma and overview and i am jaswan singh i am uh, glaucoma consultant at shankara eye hospital jaipur so the the word refractory itself means stubborn or unmanageable and refractory glaucoma can cause a lot of changes for a person who is affected with this it is uh, defined as an advanced optic nerve damage with severe impairment of visual field uncontrolled intraocular pressure despite maximum medical therapy and previous glaucoma surgeries the causes of refractory glaucoma can be varied varying from uveitic glaucoma neovascular glaucoma traumatic glaucoma iridocorneal endothelial syndrome pediatric glaucoma iridocorneal dysgenesis aphakia aniridia and a lot of uh, pre established diagnoses can turn into refractory and can be difficult to treat such glaucomas present with very high intraocular pressure on anti glaucoma medications with rapid loss of vision red eye and systemic symptoms associated with high intraocular pressures like dyspepsia uh, and vomiting the most important factor that we uh, know of refractory glaucoma is that the treatment that we are uh, uh, giving to the patient can fail and uh, even after lot of attempts the refractory glaucoma can lead to loss of vision the reasons for no response in such cases is the continuous harm that is happening in the form of inflammation neovascularization severe damage to the trabecular meshwork that has already occurred complicated procedures that have happened lead and which lead to uh, subconjunctival and sub scleral fibrosis they can be intraocular retained materials which can lead to continuous elevation in, in intraocular pressure if a patient is already known to us then the patient will definitely present with previous records and is uh, we can take such patients for early surgery however if uh, we have a new patient who presents with uh, such a diagnosis then we have to consider whether the patient has good vision how the fields are and whether we are able to get good visual fields and if media is clear then we can go ahead with oct for such patients we have to prepare the case for further intervention like for ocular conditions the patient has to be on continuous anti glaucoma medications and additional treatment in the form of anti inflammatory drugs cycloplegics anti vagf photocoagulation in neovascular glaucoma uh, due to new uh, neovascularization in retina removal of the intraocular materials and vitrectomy might be needed before we take up the patients for further intervention however the systemic care of such cases has to be uh, monitored properly and there should be uh, proper diabetic control the patient has to be on anti hypertensives systemic inflammatory and immunomodulators with immunosuppressives as necessary in such cases the main uh, treatment Uh, approach will be surgical, and this surgical procedure that will be uh, will depend on the vision that the patient has. If the patient has good vision, then we will definitely go ahead with drainage procedures. And if the vision is poor, then we will consider cyclo destructive procedures at the first itself. If the patient has pain, then we have to definitely uh, consider cyclo destructive procedures. and if there is no pain then we can leave the patient aside and patient can be just kept on anti glaucoma medications and uh, treatment that is uh, otherwise necessary the glaucoma drainage implants are the first sort of uh, management in such cases and the two devices that we have uh, in our armamentarium are the ahmed glaucoma valve and the adi device Uh, the uh, glaucoma implants act by formation of a fibrous capsule around the end plate which happens over several weeks the plate material is resistant to the fibroblasts which cannot adhere to it and hence an aqueous humor pools in 
potential space between the end plate and surrounding non adherent fibrous capsule from there passive diffusion occurs and this aqueous is absorbed by periocular capillaries and lymphatics the fibrous capsule around the end plate offers the major resistance to aqueous flow in these implants and also helps in uh, man maintaining the anterior chamber so there have been uh, a meta analysis which compares the orolab aqueous drainage implant with ahmed glaucoma valve or refractory glaucoma and it found that there uh, there was a statistically significant difference in intraocular pressure reduction between rd and agv implants during the intervals at 9 months 6 months and 12 months and the when the follow up end point the rd achieved a greater number of anti glaucoma medication reduction as compared to agv and also had a relative higher completed and qualified success rate as compared to agv implant the larger surface area of rd might yield better efficacy at lowering intraocular pressure and the lack of valve induced resistance in rd the non valve devices are also associated with better intraocular pressure control and a higher risk of hypotony because of the chances of reduced intraocular pressures in non valve devices uh, however uh, very often uh, a, a primary device can fail and we might need a second device to be implanted uh, this study which uh, assess the safety and efficacy of second ahmed valve implant in refractory glaucoma uh, found that a lot of uh, other diagnoses were the cause of refractory glaucoma the mean intraocular pressure was 35 mm of mercury the mean number of anti glaucoma medications were almost 3 uh, and the mean uh, number of previous glaucoma surgeries were almost 4 however even after multiple interventions the second agv was required as early as 3 months and as late as 8 years after the primary implant the intraocular pressure values remained significantly lower than that at the presentation as shown in this box plot over a period of 7 to 2 months the glaucoma medications required after the second implantation were also significantly reduced there have been studies done on trabeculectomy outcomes after glaucoma drainage device surgery in refractory glaucoma here is this study which evaluated the outcomes of trabeculectomy with adjunctive mitomycin c in patients with uncontrolled intraocular pressure after glaucoma drainage device implantation in consecutive patients who had undergone a trabeculectomy after gdd it found that the primary outcomes were Uh, the primary outcome was surgical success with stratified intraocular target uh, based uh, when the uh, a when the intraocular pressure was less than 18 mm of mercury and it was uh, iup reduction of uh, 20% at least b if uh, intraocular pressure was less than 15 mm of mercury and iup reduction was more than 25% at baseline and c if Uh, the intraocular pressure was less than 12 mm of mercury and intraocular pressure reduction of at least 30% was achieved secondary uh, success outcomes were number of glaucoma medications complications and need for additional glaucoma surgery uh, 20 patients were in 20 eyes of 19 patients were included uh, for analysis the median follow up and age were 3.7 years and 64.2 years the mean intraocular pressure Uh, dropped significantly over uh, the uh, over follow ups at 1 year 3 years and at 5 years hypotonic maculopathy was the only serious complication which needed rev surgical revision of trabeculectomy and it concluded that trabeculectomy is also a vi viable surgical option to treat intraocular pressure that is uncontrolled after gdd implantation however in uh, certain set of patients we might need cyclodestruction as the primary uh, mode of treatment in such cases which can be in the form of transcleral cyclophotocoagulation the endocyclophotocoagulation or the cyclocryotherapy the cyclophotocoagulation uh, was initially uh, was is uh, employs ndag and diode lasers 
the 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 laser energy that is applied is absorbed by the pigment pigmented ciliary epithelium leading to coagulative necrosis of the secretory ciliary apparatus leading to disruptive tissue damage and micro explosions which are audible as pops this tissue leading this tissue ischemia leading to uh, due to dissipated energy or supplementary mechanisms the newer techniques of cyclophotocoagulation such as endo scopic cyclophotocoagulation and micropulse transcleral cyclophotocoagulation they exert less damage on the ciliary epithelium and surrounding structures the endoscopic approach allows direct application and titration of the laser energy to the target ciliary epithelium and maintains the basic cellular architecture while still reducing aqueous formation the micropulse cyclophotocoagulation approach delivers the laser energy in short bursts with rest intervals allowing for a tissue effect while minimizing collateral energy damage the cyclocryotherapy it acts by rapid freezing to temperatures of uh, of the range of minus 70 degree centigrade leading to formation of intracellular micro crystals that eventually leads to cellular destruction there also occurs small vessel obliteration and necrosis of the ciliary body in addition to destruction of ciliary epithelial cells the resultant tissue ischemia acts as an additional mechanism leading to reduction of aqueous humor synthesis uh, the cryo uh, when applied close to cornea can lead to reduced corneal sensitivity due to damage of the corneal nerves and this can also be helpful for patients as we see uh, patients with the pain painful eyes uh, significantly re reduced Uh, even uh, when the uh, despite the intraocular pressures remaining high uh, uh, the cyclocryotherapy and cyclophotocoagulations have been uh, uh, like assessed in uh, comparison to each other and uh, both the modalities were able to achieve progressive reduction in intraocular pressure at day 7 one month six months and 12 months there was also rapid and statistically significant ocular hypotensive effect in eyes with refractory glaucoma at one year follow up however the challenge still remains as there are very high chances of a re, uh, high rate of surgical failure inadequate response to traditional surgical and medical treatment and multiple surgeries may be required in refractory glaucomas in very uh, few uh, cases we might resort to the palliative treatment in the form of evisceration in which the ocular contents are re removed in toto and it can be uh, associated with a implant that we uh, place inside the scleral shell and a prosthetic eye can be applied however uh, for some cases when the globe is uh, grossly uh, damaged and it's normal uh, shape is not maintained then we might resort to enucleation surgery where the whole of the eye is removed and an orbital implant is used and a prosthetic eye can be uh, used over it thank you